Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Voice of the Voices. I'm Ansel Young and today we're coming to you from Anime Midwest in Chicago, Illinois. And today I have with me a very special guest. Uh, Juliet Simmons from Sentai. How are you doing today? I am doing well. Not a lot of sleep because, you know, convention. But uh, other than that, yeah, con life, essentially. So we have a few questions here for you. First off, what is it like working in industry today? So I can't say like today versus past, but uh, essentially now I think it's actually more of like a family type thing because honestly you kind of know everyone around there. A lot of people will, you know, introduce themselves if they haven't seen you. You know, you kind of just know people first name basis. I don't call like, you know, Chris Ayers, Mr. Ayers. It's like, hey Chris, you know, how are you doing? So it's actually, it's pretty casual. So yeah. Now, I know you're a little bit newer to the industry, but um, are there any favorite series that you've worked on? Yes. <laughs> um, I actually am a huge anime fan. So I was a huge fan of Tomiko Market. Um, and so when they're like, yeah, you're going to be in it, I actually flipped out. Uh, my sister told me, she's like, yeah, you're going to be uh, one, of the, one of the supporting characters. I'm like, I know that. I know that one. You know, Midori. I was like... Oh my god, so I was a huge fan. It was so much fun working with Meggers and uh, I think also Caitlin French. And um, it was just fun. It was really, really nice to be on that show. <laughs> so yeah. Another show you worked on, Girls and Ponzer. So basically, Girls and Tanks. What was it like working on that? Uh, it was like having Girls and Tanks. Um, so it was Girls und Ponzer, which was... Um, I'd heard about a little bit before. Really, they brought us in because they're like, "Oh, I think there's a singing part, and we might need singers." And I was like, "You know, I can, I can do whatever." Turned out there wasn't like really, um, so they just kind of kept us around. And um, so I actually got to have some fun times with that because I had like kind of a sassy like Megana girl, and um, I think it was Janice who was working on it, and she was just really nice about everything. Uh, it was one of my earlier shows, so I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> So yeah, it was it was it was a fun show. Another show you worked on, Nobunaga the Fool. What was it like working on that? Okay, so that one was more recent. That was the first time uh, that I'd gotten main, like main heroine. And Chris actually called me when I was asleep, um, and he was like, "Hey, hey, I have some good news for you. you. You're gonna you're gonna do a heroine." I was like, "Really?" And so um, I actually had to watch both seasons of Nobunaga the Fool. Um, and I'd actually seen that first episode before, but going through it, I actually, because it was uh, jo Joan of Arc, um, I actually, you know, learned quite a bit about the historical figure and, you know, went through the entire series. It, it was a rough series. Like, I enjoyed it, but it was, oh, there was a lot of screaming and a lot of torture, and it was just like, I felt so much for Joan. <laughs> so yes, it was it was an experience. <laughs> now, if you could play any of the characters you played in anime, uh, etc., and be them in real life, who would you want to be? And feel free to mix and match multiple characteristics over a few characters. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want to be Joan um, because she doesn't have the best of luck. Um, I feel like. Mirori from Tamako Market would be just easiest because it's like everybody loves her. She's actually very popular with the girls, you know. Um, but I feel like the funnest would be from Dog and Scissors, the younger sister who literally has a chainsaw and is just absolutely insane. But I love her, like sincerely. I have a I have a weird love for crazy characters. <laughs> so yes, uh, Dog and Scissors, little sister. I loved you in that show. You were hilarious. Yeah. It was hilarious to do. <laughs> now, um, is there anything that you can talk about that you've recently worked on or that's recently been announced? I know there's a lot of NDAs, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, there's one I really, really want to talk about, but I can't because, like, we're still recording. And I'm like... <laughs> but it's so much fun. But um, other than that, I actually want to just plug for Nobunaga because not a lot of people like knew about it and even I was like kind of skeptical on the series it was like they said it was something like oh you've got all the different historical characters coming in and like fighting each other and I was like you know there was in fact another series uh, similar to that that came out the same season I was like oh no that's terrible so 
I just want to say that Nobunaga the Fool actually does get very good. I can't spoil anything because obviously, but you know, the characters, you, you start to really feel for it. There's so many surprises. I was actually screaming by the last episode. I was like, no, no. So I say it's just worth a watch um, if you're into the historical characters. So yeah. A couple more show questions here for you. Uh, actually, one more. What was it like working on Outbreak Company? Outbreak Company was a blast. I'm not just saying that because, like, oh, you know, voice actor. But working with Kyle Jones is a special experience for everyone. Um, he is a very funny guy. And so, like, sometimes you'll get the line and you won't realize that, oh, we're recording now. And he'll be like, oh, yes, next time a little bit, a little bit louder. Like, he's just so sassy. Um, so he really let us do um, a lot of the fun things that we wanted to do with the characters. Um, I was actually really proud of the dub that came out for it because so many of the characters just were so funny. I was like, this is actually funnier than the Japanese, I have to say. Um, and I'm very much for that. And it was just, it was wonderful. He gave me direction for emotions. He gave me direction for comedy, which you don't get a lot. Um, so yeah, it was, it was just wonderful. So yeah. And uh, some people might not know, but you have your own YouTube channel. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so this this was before voice acting, um, being my normal weeaboo self. Um, I essentially decided to buy a mic um, and sing covers of Vocaloid songs that um, I guess a lot of people liked. And uh, because I can't do Japanese at all, because uh, I'm Texan, I decided to do English covers, and I was like, oh, you know, I'll just, I'll do my best. And slowly after time, people were like, yeah, yeah, I really like, you know, I did uh, Kagura Project, which turned into an anime, and people were like, you got me into that series. I'm so happy you did that. And I was like, I'm just happy I could be that bridge, you know, in between. So uh, it's been really fun being Jubiphonic, you know? Um, and I'm just so grateful for all the fans that I meet. Like, especially today, I finally met fans, and they're the sweetest people. So yes, it's um, it's been a ride. <laughs> yes. Um, now, do you have any uh, Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media networks that you'd like to share for people to follow you on? Maybe your YouTube channel? Yeah, name? Um, so I have my YouTube channel, which is Jubiphonic. Um, and then, of course, I have my Twitter, which is most of my social media is me as Jubiphonic, but it's still me, essentially. Um, and, of course, you know, I, I'm pretty talkative. I'll talk about anime all day long. Um, also Vocaloid. So yeah, just Jubiphonic on Twitter, uh, Jubiphonic on YouTube. I even have a Facebook fan page because that happened. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's essentially it. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. It was a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure for me. I'm Ansel. And I'm Juliet. <laughs> and we'll see you next time.